in this video something about wiring, wiring an electronic circuit. And uh, when you look at uh, Google, YouTube, the World Wide Web, etc., etc., there are always, say, voices that tell you that the wiring must be as short as possible. And that is in a certain way true. Uh, but, uh, in my opinion, and due to my experience, um, uh, for circuits going to approximately maximum 10 megahertz or 15 megahertz, uh, you can use in a certain way uh, no long wiring, of course, but uh, say good enough wiring. That's my idea. And I want to demonstrate that here. This is that oscillator that I've published today. And say, uh, this is a quite long wire and it goes to the, this long wire here goes to the output. Output is here. Want to refer to my earlier schematic. Uh, does it have any effect on the waveform? No, not at all. Waveform is very pure. And when I turn this uh, 500 uh, pico farad tuning capacitor that's also connected via quite long way uh, wiring here to the oscillator circuit. No problems occur at all. You can see the waveform is pure. I now go to the lowest frequency that it can bring. And it is very, very okay. So now to the highest frequency. I want to make this video as long as possible. Perhaps that's a little bit boring, but anyway. Uh, highest frequency is here. I can, of course, connect my uh, counter to it. Let's do that. That's perhaps interesting to show. Let me connect the counter to it to see what's happening. Um, but of course, uh, this all perhaps distracts a little bit from the the whole idea and the issue that I that I want to talk about. But anyway, this is the counter now connected. I hope it's visible. And we are now with this switch here on six, five, nine kilo cycles. Waveform is here. Change the, uh, the, the tuning capacitor a little bit. And we surely can now go to, of course, when the capacitor of the tank circuit gets higher, we are on lower frequencies. Anyway, But um, you can surely see here that there is quite long wiring here from this unit here. And I'm going to switch to the highest frequencies and at the same time look on the oscilloscope. Higher frequency, still a long wiring. And still long wiring, and now to the highest frequency. And we are on 2 megahertz, approximately 
etc etc well uh, what is the issue about wiring well there are of course many things to tell uh, here is one wire and here's another wire uh, let's say we are talking about DC here is a positive here's a negative and here is a load say a resistor or whatever uh, a resistor is of course a purely ohms load so anyway uh, that means that here when the current starts to flow here say we we have here uh, 18 volts and we have here a resistor of 100 ohms ohms law is valid but that's not the idea of this video uh, a current starts to flow here and there is a magnetic uh, influence between the two wires uh, that means that here is a magnetic field and here is also a magnetic field and they influence each other and for instance on long uh, transatlantic uh, uh, telephone cables in the 1950s that was a serious problem because uh, there was say here on a long cable inductance and there was also capacitance and that's why they used in the past the so-called pupin coils pupin coils and these coils were made um, in a certain way that say the inductance and the capacitance on long uh, transatlantic uh, telephone cables or other telephone cables were say um, cured in a certain way and say every as far as I know every say hundred miles or so there was such a pipping coil important to tell anyway um, and that's when I'm talking about long cables and uh, these cables were of course not uh, driven by a uh, DC but by AC and with AC alternating current we have uh, in a certain way in other situation there is of course also that magnetic influence and these pipping coils were used to say transport the telephone signal over hundreds of miles of course such a telephone signal is an AC um, signal anyway a bird say in a certain way the principle stays the same though of course when we are talking about DC there is a constant magnetic field and when we are talking about AC sent into a big line there is an AC field and that AC field also say couples uh, one uh, wire one electrode to the other electrode well of course this is a sea to drink and there is much more and very good information about um, long telephone cables how they were used how perhaps in the 1950s Philips developed uh, a system for overseas cables to uh, say get 100 or 200 uh, signals at the same time over that uh, undersea cable and then I mean telephone signals speech say a few hundred uh, speech signals were 
sent uh, over that cable. Anyway, uh, this gets very, very, very long, but anyway, uh, the, the idea of the video was, um, is it necessary uh, to use very short wiring? Yes, it's necessary, but only on the higher frequencies. So anyway, here's quite long wiring. The circuit is very, very okay. And uh, by the way, to get such a signal out here, I've used now a pure unshielded cable. And the signal is still very pure. Uh, there's no broadening, there's no noise, etc. etc. So in this case, with this circuit up to 2 megahertz, that works very okay. Anyway, uh, so uh, don't focus too much on long wiring, but I have to say, when you want to make an audio amplifier, uh, there, there is a need of a certain focus on long wiring, but much more important is how the ground wire is made in an audio amplifier. You can even use, say, quite long wiring in an audio amplifier as long as your earth circuit and grounding circuit is perfect. Many videos of that are on my YouTube channel. So, I want to dive, and this is perhaps quite idiot, into my box of wires. Uh, well, take up this wire, a coax cable. That coax cable has a mantle, and it has a, a central uh, electrode, and the capacitance between the mantle and the electrode is fixed to a certain uh, 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 limit. You have uh, 75 ohms um, coax cables, also 50 ohms. Well, I cannot tell you more about that because uh, the whole idea of 50 ohms or 75 ohms, I have to study that much better. Anyway, so, of course you can use this as a shielded cable for audio. Very useful. Anyway, well, uh, I want to focus again on, say, certain cables. Anyway, uh, this is for instance a very standard cable made for 230 volts, uh, 50 hertz, but you see there is a certain distance between these two electrodes of the cable. That means that there is also a certain capacitance. And of course, when we are talking about 50 hertz, 230 volts, etc., etc., the cable capacitance doesn't play any role, but, say, uh, when you say take this cable completely out and connect it to a high frequency oscillator, it will have a certain frequency. And that's called the so called Legger line. This is, of course, not a real Legger line, but the principles refer to the Legger line. Anyway, so. Uh, my camera will run out now. Uh, well, standard telephone cable, of course. There, there will be capacitance between the, the four lines that are inside this cable. Etc. Etc. So, thanks for watching. 
it is only a quite sloppy video and here again a cable that will surely have a certain impedance and when we are talking about high frequency circuits uh, that's what I mean uh, certain capacitance and inductance etc etc but when you make these circuits don't be too afraid to make the wirings between all the electronic circuits too long. That's my advice. Also the aim of this video. Uh, of course you can go to the pure scientific uh, calculations about cable impedance cable capacitance etc etc but my aim is my aim on of my youtube channel is uh, to encourage experiments and that means uh, that say uh, don't be afraid to make some cables to certain electronic circuits too long And of course I'm talking about circuits going from say 100 kilohertz up to approximately 15 megahertz. When you want to make circuits higher than 15 megahertz the length of the cables starts to play, start to play an important role. Thanks for watching. Quite long video by the way. That was not my aim, but anyway.